<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to What the Flick. We are reviewing The Young Pope, episode five, cleverly called? Fifth episode. Nicely done. Uh, I'm William. Who are you, sir? Tim. Tim. Uh, Alonzo's normally with us, couldn't make it today. Uh, presumably he'll be back later in the week uh, for the second episode this week. The fifth episode uh, of The Young Pope uh, is, is um, the majority of this episode is just about how actually pious he is. Have you noticed that? Like, there's been a lot of episodes about how maybe he's the worst pope ever, and here's an entire episode that is mostly, at least until that big speech at the end, sort of dedicated to maybe he's great at this. Yeah, he, he seems to show uh, sort of the sensitive, uh, wise, caring, uh, unimpeachable side as he has been with Esther, but more of that. Mm -hmm. And also he has shown Buello that he is also a very politically savvy pope as well. Buello thought that he could outsmart him and mm -hmm. we see Buello's blackmail scandal come to fruition in this episode even though it doesn't really pl play out like he thinks it will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he, he tries to uh, capture the pope uh, and, and Esther. Get in the second base. Get in the second base. Uh, and you can just like, he's he's got his hand on her, and he's just got this like, hmm, I don't know about this. <laughs> this isn't that great. Like it's not it's not really that like it's hard to imagine that on the cover of the New York Times going, oh my god, how salacious! It's like it looks like he's just like, you know, like could you my bra shifted? Would you mind helping? Like it's that level it of sensuality with this, with this really tender like feel my stomach. Like I I, I know you're a saint. I want you to help me conceive yeah, a child. Bless but, my yeah, with yeah. blessings, not yeah. with with sex. She might have wanted sex, but in that moment, it was a, a, a lot less scandalous than the trailers made it seem. And, yeah. and Vuelo agrees. Yeah, absolutely, and but at the same time, he gives this speech about uh, uh, the cowardice of the priesthood and how people who choose the priesthood in his eyes uh, are afraid to love people. God's love is pure. Uh, the love of another person is fragile, dangerous, painful at times, not pure. Uh, and Voyello feels so shamed that he says, turn off the camera. He gives Diane Keaton uh, uh, the, the flash drive, the flash drive, the drive full of the evidence. Uh, and, but at the same time, it's so perfect. It's so asexual. Every line of dialogue is laser targeted at Voyello's uh, uh, shame that I'm just like, he knows this is going on right now. Yeah. He knows people are looking at him. He's not stupid. He knows everything that's going on right now, so I don't even know if I can tr trust that divinity, that, that insight. And despite what Buello has told her, he's being the Pope that Esther thinks he is. Mm. You know, the, the above it all, the, the untouchable, the, you know, yeah. scandal-proof Pope, the, the, the true saint. Yeah, absolutely, and we see, there are bits of this, and we see this a lot in Paolo Sorrentino's other movies, these sort of moments Momentary miracles, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you know they can just be like sitting in a leafy glade, and a flower will suddenly bloom, and it just one flower planted in the middle of a uh, green field. I know, wasn't that like amazing? That was just like wow. That that was. I get symbolism. I I, I get I don't it. Know. You don't fun. you don't think that flower was planted? I think that was uh, a <laughs> planted. <laughs> it's 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 so on the nose with that symbolism, yeah. though. But it's you know religion is kind of on the nose sometimes. Sure, it it yeah. plays off in big moments, in, in little miracles. It's it's really trying to show you the wonders of the world, of humanity, of God, and so it doesn't feel false the way it sometimes can, I think, in some of his other stories. So we get some flashbacks to young Lenny in this episode. And his really exploits, young Lenny. Yes, very young Lenny, in the orphanage with his friend Andrew, who is also a cardinal mm. now. Um, but we also get the hints from Sister Mary of the reasons why she thinks the Pope is a saint, a, a miracle that was performed with the, with the groundskeeper's wife on her deathbed. We don't, we don't know what happened yet, but mm -hmm. Lenny doesn't want to talk about it, and he says straight away he doesn't want to talk about things that he doesn't understand. I'm concerned because the implication is, oh, maybe he cured her of some debilitating that's, that's disease, it, yeah. uh, but the fact that we're not seeing it, uh, and the fact that Lenny, who wouldn't, it seems would be very, like if there was anything he could say to prove his own divinity, I think he'd say it. And I wonder maybe if there is some element of shame here. I wonder if everyone thinks it's a miracle, but actually Lenny didn't do something great. Maybe Lenny he did something. He doesn't believe he did something great. I'm saying maybe he actively did something terrible. <laughs> and then it turned out great. Like it's possible. 
Who knows? I, I'm hoping we'll learn about that because that's a really interesting little mystery. It'd be weird if we didn't. I yeah. feel like we got to get to it. I don't know if we're going to get to it soon. I might try to milk it for a bit. Last episode, we ended on this sort of cliffhanger that there might be this other messiah competing for the Pope's holiness. Uh, and we didn't get to that until the very end of this episode. When the Pope and Voyello show up, take some time, really set up the lighting in the room just so that they'd really, what an entrance. Yeah. They look good. They look yeah. good in the, the hat and with the, the spectacular Art mm -hmm. Deco type lights behind I don't it. know if that was in there or they brought it with them. I hope I they brought it with them. Yeah, I assume so. Uh, and they're just like, you are busting the Pope's <laughs> balls! Um, which they, he, he, he kind of was. Yeah. He kind of was. I'm curious, where are we going with this? Because we're, we're letting it milk for a while. We're building with this uh, uh, pretender to the throne, or maybe not, I don't know. Maybe he's the real deal. I don't know. What do you think? Where do you, where do you, what's, what's, with, with where does Tony this go? I, I, I expect it to do, go to a place that I don't expect. A and I almost want to color it with the lens of the earlier scene in the episode where he and Andrew meet the hooker in the hotel lobby. Mm. And they're immediately drawn to her. They go sit down with her. And she, right on the nose, identifies them as two priests, although maybe she doesn't know what she's gotten herself into. Mm. And then she says that her clients uh, call her proof of God. And, that, and then she says, but I have actual proof of God. And Lenny drops everything to, to get this out of her because he's desperate for just that information. And right. She takes a picture of him, which he doesn't ever allow to happen, but he, it doesn't seem to affect That's him That's got to be moment. important later. Yeah. And says the proof is in your eyes, which is cryptic and vague, and well, you know, maybe that's just what hookers the, say. But. Well, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, the the human eye is impossibly complicated. Yeah, uh, it's it's some, it's been argued that it's a miracle that it works at all. Um, so there's that argument to be made. There's also the poetry of it. Yeah. Oh, your eyes are so beautiful. And Jude Law the, has the windows. Some nice He's blue gray eyes. Really nice. Yeah. Um, but the eyes are the window to the soul. Is you can take the poetic answer to that. You can take the scientific answer to that. You can take the plot answer to that, which is uh, someone has Lenny's picture and he's refusing to let anyone take his picture. And it's possible it might be a plot point that when his picture does come out, it came from a prostitute. Yeah, that, that's a real proper scandal. That that's actually like potentially a real scandal. Like that could be a thing. It's still kind of circumstantial. Sure. He can, she could have just walked up to him in the street yeah. and taking a picture but at the same time I did like knowing that other popes have sort of taken leave and like gone play bingo <laughs> like maybe if you hang out around Vatican City and like the outlying areas late at night you might run into the Pope and like have a sandwich with him at like a at a, at a, at a truck you know that's that's a nice little nice little fantasy sure I enjoy it yeah I wonder why you I, go I, to grab a torta with the Pope that's yeah. entirely possible you see you see stranger things Yes, it did. It was, yeah, it was pretty good, wasn't it, Pope? Like, you know, like, yeah, like that, that sort of conversation would be kind of nice and humanizing. Uh, Lenny finally got the kangaroo to jump. Yes. You think that means anything? Because there's so much symbolism here, I honestly don't even know what matters anymore sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it's clear he wants to imagine that he has this divine power that everyone says he has. Mm. That he has, he, that he is this conduit to God, and God's power flows through him, and that God for sure could make a kangaroo jump. So if I can do it, that's just this little hint that yes, I have this connection, and yes, God is real, and I know kangaroos jump, but it jumped in this moment, and it didn't before. So maybe I'm getting good at this. Maybe I, I don't know. I keep looking at this kangaroo thing. What are we gonna do? Are we setting up something with the kangaroo, or is it pure fancy? And I'm just wondering, like maybe Lenny's gonna get the crap kicked out of him by this kangaroo. <laughs> by the end, he's gonna like do something like. Purely for himself, God's going to be mad, and he's going to get a kangaroo mauling. You know, and that might be fun, too. Oh, yeah, that could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Voyello came on to, uh, is it Diane, what's his sister's name? Sister Thank Mary? You? Sister Mary. Yeah. Voyello kind of came on to Sister Mary twice. Yeah, that was a weird scene, because one, he had no reaction to Sister Mary knowing he was there mm. at Girolamo's house, meeting Girolamo. Mm. This person that he confides all of his deepest secrets in mm -hmm. and supposedly, you know, keeps pretty private part of his life. Mm -hmm. Sister Mary just shows up and he has very little reaction to that other than to say how beautiful she looks. That, that might be, however, that might be an attempt to sort of obfuscate. You know, like, oh, well, whatever you the, do, don't look in the cabinet. Yeah. Like, oh, no, no, that's just this kid. Not important. Downplay the importance of this. He's yeah. a smooth operator. He's a smooth operator. But yeah, he has this long bit with Sister Mary in which it sounds like he's actively 
coming on to her. Like Lenny's words actually might have affected him and made him question his vocation. Almost. Like he doesn't want to be a coward that that he knows his you know calling entails. Yeah. Um, he also has a moment of genuine, uh, what looks like genuine penitence, but may have been just for show in public, of apologizing to Lenny in the garden. But immediately preceding that, uh, he talks about, you're better with the names than I am. Who's the gentleman who's an alcoholic? Uh, Gutierrez. Gutierrez, talks about Gutierrez. Maybe Gutierrez isn't right for this job. Maybe it's sending the wrong message. Did you know he's an alcoholic? Did you know he's, Lenny stops him right there. I know everything. What does he know? What well, is Gutierrez besides that? I, I, clearly Gutierrez is something because he's worried about what Lenny knows. Yes. And, and, and rather than us develop that plot point, he has another vision that this time we don't get to see mm. um, around the statue yeah. that the nuns are playing volleyball above. It, it strikes him, you know, silent in, in that moment, and he mm. gets up and he leaves the conversation that he's having with the Pope. It's interesting that I, I didn't necessarily have it that he was specifically having a vision right there. I just assumed he was having, like, a crisis of conscience. A entirely possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, the, the obvious answer is... Yeah, maybe it's not obvious, but the show has led me to, to assume right away that he's gay. Possible. Possible, because that was such a, a plot point in the earlier episodes. I'm going to root out all the homosexuals in the church. All these priests are confessing to heterosexual affairs to right. try to, to muddy the waters there. So I, I don't know what Gutierrez could think is so desperate. Well there's, there's a bunch of things. It could be completely random, and I killed a guy in Reno just yeah. to watch him die. You know, like, it could be that bad. Or maybe we're overthinking it. Maybe the fact that he's having these visions is what he's trying to tell them. Maybe uh, he's concerned about his sanity. We could have a, 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 a maybe he's got, like, a tumor yeah. or something or some other condition that makes him see things, and he's worried that if he goes out into the open and has too much responsibility, this will actually impact him. It could or, be that simple. Or, or he's worried that, that, like, if he does have a tumor and he knows it's there, that bringing that to light will have will cause someone to remove it and that'll remove his visions. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of stress. We're grasping the There's a lot of speculation. Could be that he has uh, a history of child abuse. And that could be a him, thing. him being put in charge of this child abuse scandal will awaken all of these deep, you know, mm -hmm. seated crises. And, and undermine crises. the church at that, uh, at, 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 at bat. So, um, I mean, there's a lot. And obviously we're just speculating, but I think the show wants us to speculate because they made it. They made a point of it twice in a row, right. like in a couple of scenes. So it's interesting because the Young Pope isn't really a plot-heavy show in a lot of ways. No, there's quite a bit of intrigue, but there's not actually all that much going on in any given episode. Uh, and we would be remiss uh, from from moving on and ending the video if we didn't talk about his big speech where com compromise is dead. I have deleted it. Yeah, thoughts. I mean, it's, it's the attitude that he's sort of been toying around with up until now. We saw a preview of it in his, you know, his speech in, in the square. Yeah. And, and, and I, I get it. He wants... For sure, he's, he's showing all the cardinals that he's in charge mm. and that his, his word is law and that everyone who fought him in the past is going to literally come over and kiss his feet. Yeah, and, and you know you will submit, you will obey, and I know you will. Mm -hmm. I picked the right shoes for this. <laughs> yeah, great use of I'm sexy and I know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, good scene. But at the same time, it's it's hardlining rhetoric. Yeah, and it doesn't always match everything he says in private. And, and, it's, and it's certainly not a first for the church either. They they've no. been that way in the past. Yeah. No, there, there's, he talks a bit about how the idea of the church kind of might want to be popular. Wouldn't it be great if everyone saw us as great? But if everyone's just seeing us as kind of cool, are we having any sort of impact? And that's a legitimate conversation to be having. Yeah. The rarefied nature of one's connection with God. And maybe by making it seem a little less uh, uh, casual, making it seem like something that you don't just approve of, but you actually have to fight for, maybe that will actually make the Catholic Church more valuable and more powerful today. He did talk about how the previous pope um, was seen as more compromising, more popular. Looking and for goodwill. It world. makes me wonder if the idea of the show is that he actually is the next pope. Af after Francis. Francis is, is a very popular pope right now. He's, he's, uh, uh, he hasn't completely done away with everything that the church has ever stood for that some people dislike, but he's way more flexible. He's way more uh, uh, understanding about certain groups uh, that the church has not always been very high on. So if the idea is that Lenny is going to be uh, the antithesis of that. The pendulum swing in the other direction from Francis is, you know, it's it easy be pretty to, far. to infer, yeah. But, it, but your pendulum swings that far with Francis, it's got to swing that far back. 
and that is intense. Yeah. And I admire that the show is at least challenging the idea that maybe swinging that far back isn't as inherently horrible as it seems. But maybe it is. Maybe I mean, it's we'll just find terrible. Out because on, on paper, this all looks bad, but in practice, Lenny is a pretty good pope in terms of his one on one. On a one to one basis. Yeah. yeah, like that's the kind of thing. Like, on, on, like, if he was actually my priest, I think I might actually feel pretty good about it. Uh, but. To hear any of those speeches is horrifying, and and but there there that, that actually is a is a factor. I mean, some people are great in certain capacities in their job and not in others. You could be fantastic in middle management, yeah. but you'd be a terrible president of the company, you know, and and vice versa. So I don't know. We'll see where we're going here. Uh, I'm curious. Any last thoughts before we move on? Yeah, he stressed the word imperative quite a few times. Like mm. the the last pope allowed you to love God, encouraged you to love God, gave you the opportunity to love God. But I think what Lenny is stressing is that you must love God. Mm. There's no shortcuts. There's no way around it. There's no options. There's no opportunity. You either do it or you don't, and you must. Yeah, and that's interesting because as a religious organization, they rely fundamentally on the existence of God. Yeah. Like with, if there is, if you can only sort of casually choose to love God, what's the point of their yeah, it existence? The whole purpose, yeah. Exactly. So on one hand, yeah, okay. On the other hand, man, not the most cogent uh, argument I've ever made, but I, I think there's that element to it where it just you kind of want him to be nice, but on the other hand, he doesn't not have an argument. And I think at its best, the show is good about challenging that kind of assumption. Sure. Yeah. So uh, we will uh, have our challenges assumpted uh, again next time. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday with episode six, the sixth, sixth episode, episode of The Young Pope. Keep poping. <laughs>